Good evening, this is Bar Pask. Going to paint, no surprise, another 8x10 tonight. Um, I'm going to paint, let me show you what I'm doing. A teddy bear. I know I've done a few teddy bears. Um, a couple years ago, my ex mother in law passed away, and uh, she was a big collector of teddy bears. <laughs> well, they just recently had a a sale at her home. They're finally selling off her home and um, my daughter, her granddaughter, went over there and uh, a couple things she picked out to her was teddy bears. Uh, this one and a smaller one and um, one for me. I wanted to have one too. Um, I think this is the one my daughter's going to keep but I said let me take it home first because I might paint it. So um, I think it's a Gund, I think. Anyway, it's Boyd Bear, maybe a Boyd Bear. But uh, I positioned it like it was sleeping. I thought that was kind of cute. Kind of made a pillow there under its little head and uh, just played around. I thought that was kind of a sweet position. Um, this, obviously, I lit it. So when you squint and look at that, we uh, the head's the brightest thing. And um, so we've got some different values. Of course, it's you know, one color. So, but we've got. So we have to look really close at the values. I am um, going to think I'm going to premix some color. Maybe I'll bring you over for that. Um, I have a uh, puddle of color on here right now. Let me bring you over. That um, I had just painted the edges of that dog painting and uh, kind of a gold color, and I threw in some transparent red oxide. And if you're new to my channel, I use mostly a limited palette. I use a warm and cool of blue, yellow, and red, white, and then I have transparent red oxide and Indian yellow, which I don't have out there. Give me a second there, squirt some of that out. I use Cobra paints mostly, love them, very good quality water mixable oils again. I thin with a little water if I need to. By the way, I just heard back from my client on the dog commission that I just, my last recordings, and she loved it. No changes, so boy, that feels good. So anyway, as you can see here, I've got, uh, I don't exactly know what it looks like to you. It is a kind of dark gold green color. I made it out of um, the three primaries, more yellow, and like I said, I just threw in some transparent red oxide. So let's just play with that puddle. I'm going to put in some more transparent red oxide, which obviously warms it up. Okay. I want enough of this probably to do the bear. Let's get this out of the way. That's mostly crimson, a little bit of a purple color I mixed up. Um, so we'll take some of this and push it over here. And there's the shadowed areas of the bear. Of course, we need to be darker. So I'm going cooler. I'm going to throw some blue in that shadow area. I'm looking at it over there, which is going to pull it more green. So we'll throw a little bit of this. Like I said, this is crimson with a little blue in it. We'll throw some of that in there too. And I'm not too worried about it being exact. We can always adjust it. So we've got a darker, put some more red in it. I don't want it to look like a green. That's pretty warm. Yeah, you know, it's just all trial and error. error. If you're from TikTok, thanks for coming over. I went on there live the other night for about like a half an hour. Um, made me, to be honest with you, made me a little nervous. You know, I'm used to this. It's me and the camera. It's quiet, and um, but I'll try it again. I just felt like I had to watch the chat all the time. Okay, so then I uh, there's kind of a deep value, a midtone, and. Uh, Throw more yellow in it. A 
I like that better for the mid-tone. And we'll pull some of this out. And we're going to make it brighter and lighter. And this is one of those things where I probably will use my palette knife to, to create some nice texture on the bear. So, again, when you're doing something like this, it's just nice to have some puddles, I think, to work into. So this, I don't know what they look like color-wise to you. Um, but it's, you know, more about value than anything. I may have just gotten that too chalky with that white, but we'll see. So that gives us something to start with. Let's turn you back around, get you back over here. Again, um, this is an 8 by 10. This is a oil prime linen panel by Centurion. I um, actually had intended to maybe pick up a, I don't know, a rectangle shape canvas. And I am going to do that soon. Um, as you recall, I've done a couple pair of shoes, high heels. Um, lately, I did a red pair and a blue pair. My plan is to go to the thrift store and buy maybe three more pair and line up like five pair in a row and paint them all. You know, you get these things in your head, and that's something I want to do. So I could tone this tonight. God, I just got paint all over myself already. That didn't take long. <laughs> Wow, I am a sloppy painter. I shouldn't have my rings on probably painting, should I? Push paint into them. All right. <laughs> I've got a small brush. We're going to try to sketch this on. I have my view catcher, this little thing that you adjust for the size of your canvas. We'll adjust it for an 8 by 10. And we'll go on horizontal because I um, that fits my composition best, my bear. All right, we'll look through there and see what we can do. See what we like. And uh, the bear's pretty much from the pillar where the pillar begins. He's pretty much going to fill the length of the canvas, it looks like. I uh, have fabric draped over the front. I kind of like that. And it looks like his ear goes up to about there. All right. Yeah, I gave her, my ex-mother-in-law, a painting of a teddy bear one time as a gift, and uh, she passed away and he just gave it back to me. Not like I need it back, but uh, yeah, I was trying some different things with the bear. I even tried to, I had him kind of foreshortened with his head coming toward us off the table and uh, I'm going to put that away not always but usually when I get one section of it sketched in usually I can go off of that for everything else We'll see. He's got this cute little bow. And 
course his arm is kind of foreshortened coming at us. Just have to look at how far out it comes. Yeah, I'm looking at it as I come down. I just, I try to look how far back from the arm is the stomach that goes across. And I look at this shape in here to get the drawing, you know, what's this look like inside here? You can see the bottom of one foot there. And again, we can see this down in here. Got a shadow cross there. All right, let's look at that. Do we think that'd be cute? Yeah, I mean, it could have been a little bigger, I guess. Could have filled the canvas completely, brought the pillow up to here. You know, I've got it proportioned pretty well. Do I want to wipe him off? You got to be willing to do that. Uh, I can't say I want to, but I am. I'm going to wipe him off. I didn't really want to do that once again, but I just feel like he could have been bigger. If I'm not happy with the sketch, I am not going to be happy with the painting. So don't settle, you know. All right, let's look at this again. So if we want to get, we're going to want to get his head more up into there. We're going to try to fill the canvas with him this time. Okay, let's look through here so I get what I want. So what I can do is measure, so you can hold it up like this and kind of measure the, like the halfway point as you're looking through it and see what's, what hits halfway to kind of help you. So that's what I'm doing. And if I've got him pretty much filling the canvas, halfway is just under, just under his arm right here. So we got to keep that in mind. All right. I just want him a little bigger. I know years ago when I was newer to painting, I would spend longer on my sketch and uh, sometimes wasn't completely pleased with it. And I go ahead and paint it because I put so much effort into the sketch. Then it's a bad painting. I try not to settle now and try to get what I want. This is such an important part of it. I 
I find that beginner painters a lot of times will have a canvas and like maybe paint, do a still life, and they'll put it right in the middle, a little tiny setup, you know, fill that canvas up, fill it up. I run stuff off even, not everybody agrees with that, but not always, but I mean, I will do that. But I don't know why they do that. I've noticed they do that sometimes. using just a little water to thin things down a little bit. And I can see that bow coming down in here. Those little paws about there. Okay, we're looking at this for his stomach. Yeah, I kind of tried some, like I said, different positions and uh, put his little, uh, this legs laying over this leg. I that was kind of cute do a whole teddy bear series, huh? Different positions. Okay, wait a minute, I think I've squished this down a little bit. So he's bigger. Okay, let's do some measuring. Now, if we measure from, with my arm straight out, from the tip of the ear to the bottom of the little hand. Okay, and we're gonna compare that from the tip of the ear to the bottom of the hand on the bear over there. And I start at the, okay, so this measurement over there is the same as this. So that's about right. Let's get the length. So that measurement, as far as the length, it's about two of that. So it's about one, two. Well, that's pretty close too, okay. I thought he felt a little short, but maybe not. And then like say he's got a shadow here. So as Paul needs to come up, this one probably needs to come out. And I'm, if you've watched me, you know I always adjust things as I paint, so. All right, let's get getting going. I'm going to start with the darkest parts I see first. Put our view catcher aside. All right, so we'll get into that, that darkest mixture that we made. And I'm going to put a little more blue in it. As I'm looking at it, I think it feels a little, a little too green. So I'm still playing with it. I'm putting, all right, a squint and look for the darkest darks. There's a very dark dark there. And I do most things the same. This is like the dog commission I just completed. We'll just be, you know, blocking him in like a puzzle. It's such a good way to work because then you're not analyzing exactly what you're painting. You're just looking for shapes and values. Try it if you've never painted that way. Okay, I'm 
look in this. I'll adjust my drawing as I need to. Now we're going to kind of switch to the mid-tone and like I said we may and I'm almost sure I'll get a palette knife in here later on and uh, it's amazing when you put a light on your object how it changes the color too. And whether the light is cool or warm makes a difference. You know, and sometimes it will be between this value and this value, and you can grab a little dark and throw it into the mid-tone and get something in between too, which I do some of that too. Three values is not a bad way to start, but I mean, odds are you're going to have more than that, of course. This little hip in the front of this leg is catching a lot of light. And the top of this foot down here. It was pretty chilly here today. We didn't even get to 50, but then it's supposed to get back to 70 in a couple days, so. And then of course the time changed and now we're getting dark at before six o'clock. I like the long days. I'm getting into the lighter value now that I mixed. And I do want to I do want him to be painterly and really um, to be standing would be my best way to paint him. And if you get on the end of the brush too, which I try to remember to hold the brush across and toward the end, you don't have as much control and it's hard to get as picky, you know, if you're trying to be impressionistic, which I am, so. get too tight on anything. He's furry and
Oils are fun and juicy if you've never worked in oils. And very forgiving. I've said it before, but a lot of people start with acrylics and think they'll, I don't know, kind of work their way up to oils, but just dive into oils if that's your desire. And I started with acrylics too. Well, I used to do different folk art and things like that years ago and did acrylics. And, I, you know, I struggled with oils when I got into them at first. I just made a mess of them. But it gets easier. And I've got, uh, I think, at least a couple other teddy bear videos on here if you're interested. Okay, I want to get a little lighter on his snout. Got a little uh, nose made out of thread, I think. I said my plan is to come back with a palette knife and create some texture on the guy. Okay, the bottom of the foot isn't lighter than here, but it's um, maybe a little more pink hard to say just because of the light in reality it's I'm sure it's lighter you know if it wasn't for the fact that it's in shadow you know what I mean We're just going to block the bow in with something kind of a neutral color right now. And then we'll come back later and uh, try to suggest that it's plaid. My goal in the beginning is just to get the canvas covered. And then the bow's laying, the ribbon's laying over his shoulder like that. So we're going to develop that, but we're just getting it blocked in. All right, let's put something on that pillow too. Kind of the same thing will probably work for now. We'll just get some, just get some color on there. I just made a little pillow out of some striped fabric and wrapped it around something. I don't know, a little, just to kind of make it feel like a pillow.
And I think we'll go ahead and uh, base in that background, which is a, a dark color. So we'll take some ultramarine blue and our transparent red oxide and some white. It's a uh, cooler on purpose. And we'll just block this in. Whenever I start back and blocking in the background, it makes me always kind of wish I'd have toned the canvas. That's this pillow there. We don't want to do that. I think where would be a good point. I think we're going to bring this down below his hip. Try not to line things up in an awkward place. And if you pull these down, it doesn't catch the light so much too. Putting a tiny bit of water in that so it can move a little bit better. Now I'm thinking this will go into the, the light here. So we'd have that one little piece of white. We'll try it. I mean, we can always bring this dark down if I feel like that created an awkward uh, shape. That's the ribbon. Okay, I'm looking. This is a chance to look at um, the shape of the teddy bear. Got some great ears. Okay, and into this mixture, we're going to lighten it up a whole lot. And we'll try that for our um, lighter part of the tablecloth. And again, we're going to stop it about there and suggest that it drapes over the table, which it does. Leave me a comment if you're here watching and um, tell me where you're from. Tell me if you're an artist. Ask me questions if you've got any questions for me. Be very happy to help anybody if I could. is kind of, I mean it's over there to the left, but it's also kind of from above too. 
That's why it's casting shadows out on this side too. And what we'll do down here in the front is we'll just going to darken this up some and again if this was toned it would be better. I tone I tone frequently and I usually use like an orange color and uh, that way if the canvas is not completely covered that orange color peeks through. Didn't do it. Don't know why, but again, once I start <laughs> blocking in, I always wish I had it. He said our goal right now is just to kind of get the canvas covered. All right, we got it covered. Now let's start, we'll go to the teddy bear, which is where we started, and we'll start trying to develop him more. Put in these very dark eyes, and they do have little catch lights in them. And they're pretty bright because they're plastic. I'm going to take my stylus and we'll dip into, we'll try pure white. That doesn't always work, but uh, let me look where they are. It's so, they kind of, let me use the bigger end. I didn't pick up enough. the nose is a little lighter, a little bluer probably. Not, not light enough. Now I'm going to grab my palette knife. I've got one out here, but we all got our favorite, I think, if you work with a palette knife. You get used to the feel of a certain one, I think, and that's the one you go with the most. All right, I think before I go into the palette knife, I'm going to just take mid-tone kind of color and uh, lay more of it on first. I think we're going to, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking I'm going to reserve the palette knife work for the lightest parts of the bear maybe. That's my thought right now, but that could change. I just kind of figure things out as I go. blinding myself here. When I catch the ceiling light into this palette knife, I can't see. Okay.
you know, I'm just having fun with this and it doesn't have to be perfect. But I like the texture. Throw a little Indian yellow in there too. It's, it's a nice color. You know, I'm kind of making the whole bear fairly textured. I don't know if that is how I'll leave him or not. So I'm going to mix up orange, some cad yellow and cad red. I'm going to throw a little of that orange into this yellow mixture. I said we're just playing around. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'd like to get some of these areas a little um, redder, a little warmer. You know, vary some of the color a little bit so he's not all the same. See, I, that's a, I kind of like that. I'm going to maybe leave that stroke. When you learn to paint, um, you, for years, you know, you just paint stuff, and you learn to paint objects, which is the way you learn. And then when you get better, then you start thinking more about paint application and design and, you know, making your strokes interesting and stuff like that. But first, you've got to learn to paint. I mean, don't jump ahead of yourself. go back to my smaller brush again. Maybe. 
I'm looking at things here, seeing what needs work. Get a little color in our pillow. I'm just looking at the color in the pillow and deciding if, and it might be distracting or too much color. We'll have to decide. You know, you could even do something cute and put a tassel on the end of that. Yeah, might be cute, I don't know. All right, keep moving on. The background, we may just kind of leave it like it is. I'm sitting down below it, so. I can see something I need to do is to define the top of his head a little bit better. You know, separate it from the pillow. this all look fun it is fun <laughs> okay let's uh, let's look at that bow it's a plaid color so there's two ways you could go at it you could uh, I think what I'll do is kind of paint the red in and then we'll uh, come back with the white And this is a fairly big brush. And we got kind of a pink color on here ready, which is not bad.
I'll keep it shadowed there under his chin. I got a little too bright with it. And you know, it's one of those things you could get as picky as you wanted with it. You know, you can get out a little tiny brush and detail the heck out of it. I'm just trying to add a little more detail to it. Make it feel a little more like it's a plaid. do is grab a little tiny brush and up there on the edge of that ribbon You know, some little details important. I'm mostly about soft edges, but they don't work for everything. Yeah, I'm having trouble getting anything on there. Ooh, got a big old hunk of something there, didn't I? more than I wanted then. I went, couldn't pick it up and then all of a sudden I got a punk of it. Okay, now and I'm going to take my brush and clean it which I think this is the first time I've cleaned it These are Rosemary and Company. That's my favorite brush right now. I've, these are kind of a mess, but these are the Evergreen series, which are softer. They're very nice brushes. So we're gonna kind of pull some of these hairs out a little bit on this bear. Kind of suggest some fur here and there. Okay, now I'm going to um, hit this again.
just trying a few things now, mixing up a little blue. The complement of the orange is blue, so I'm going to, if it doesn't look good, we'll get rid of it, but I'm going to put a few little blue touches in him. here and there. You're probably thinking, what is she doing, right? at him close to see if everything makes sense. Have I explained, you know, the anatomy of the bear well? Does anything need to be darker, lighter? Um, I'm thinking right in here. We need to separate that foot. Explain that that leg comes across. A little darker right in there. we've been going just an hour okay looking for those darks again that maybe I missed.
stand up and get away from him and look at him here. That's the best way to paint if you can stand. I realize some, some people can't. But you get your face in here the whole time too close. Just looking around to see if anything doesn't read well. And I don't mind that uh, sometimes you end up with even a kind of a straight edge with a palette knife. All right. <sighs> I think I like it pretty well. You know, I think I'm going to put some of this warmth down here in the front, make it more, have better har color harmony, you know. It's up there, pull it down here. Because I did put some of that warmth in there. And you could take a really soft brush at this point if you wanted and, you know, make him look fuzzier. Um, you know, pull out more little hairs here and there. You know, we did it here and we did it here before. looking at his face and making sure I don't feel like I've got too much going on. And the catch lights are there in the eyes. Not sure how I feel about them. I just wonder if I would like it better without them. Usually I love that effect, but uh, let's take one out and decide. Of course, I've got it, some of that white now mixed into the dark. How do we feel about that? Maybe a little bit of it. I don't know. I'll look at it and decide. I may come back to it. All right. I'll bring you in and we'll sign him. Um, though I may not leave the signature and I may not be done with the painting. I never promise anything here. Got an easy last name compared to a lot of people. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. It's funny how sometimes you sign it and it's just perfect. And you want it perfect. We'll try it one more time.
All right, folks, I'm going to bring you around the front and show you my teddy bear. My uh, mother-in-law's name was Daisy. So this is probably going to be Daisy Bear or something like that. She was a cool lady. Like I said, she was my ex-mother-in-law. I've been married to my husband now for 38 years, but we, we stayed close to her. We saw her every Christmas, and uh, I still consider her my mother-in-law. When I divorced her son, she said, I don't know how you stayed with him all the years you did. Okay, look at all that texture. You know, teddy bears are fuzzy and So we'll look at him. I kind of feel like uh, maybe that ribbon's up a little high. So I might adjust that. Let's bring you back over to our guy. Let me turn the light off. Maybe you can see it better. Well, you can't see the light that way, but you can see the bear better. So there he is. Hope you enjoyed watching that. Like I said, he'll probably require a little tweaking yet, but it's a fun image to paint, and thank you so much for joining me. Watch for me again, like and subscribe. All right, you have a good evening. Bye-bye.